All right guys, this is gonna be a little bit of a longer video today, but today I thought we would talk about something pretty interesting, something that I definitely care about, especially being in Alaska, where it is typically winter or some form of a wintry season for about six months of the year. So today we are going to be looking at every winter knife or winter survival knife you should know about. So like I said, there's going to be quite a few knives here and hopefully this isn't too repetitive to my other videos, but I do try to make a lot of videos on winter survival knives because I'm in a wintry place. And even though te technically speaking right now, winter is pretty much drawing to an end for most people, this is still over the course of the winter and past times. Uh, <laughs> these are the knives that I've collected for winter survival and of course they can apply to other types of survival seasons and climates and ecosystems as a whole. Now before we get into it and look at each knife I just want to kind of clarify what makes a winter survival knife. Technically what I look at or the um, kind of pros for a winter survival knife that I'm looking at are things like a fully insulated handle whether that be plastic or rubber primarily rubber. Um, other things I'm looking at is a reasonably thick knife, something that can be batoned, something that is a heavy use or heavy duty knife. And I'm also looking at preferably size. Now, of course, there's different budget and monetary constraints, so not every knife can be huge, um, but a decent knife, something that has around a five inch blade length is preferable. Once again, not all of these are that, particularly the budget knives, just because a budget uh, knife that is particularly large in length. So it's difficult in that regard, but um, yeah. So we're gonna try to do price oriented, but um, yeah, some of the prices fluctuate. So yeah, let's jump into it. It's already been two minutes. Let's talk about the first one. So first off and the cheapest one here is the Holtzifer's um, heavy duty knife. Now this one's pretty bare bones. This is definitely more of a utility knife, but it's around the size of a Mora Clipper. And I've talked about this knife. It is definitely not my favorite. We will be talking about knives that I don't particularly love in this video. And this is one of them, but it does still technically fall into the kind of winter survival knife kind of sphere. It is a sub $20 knife. You can get these on Amazon. And uh, yeah, it's a basic knife. It does everything well. It's around a, um, an eighth of an inch thick. So not super thin, not super thick either. There are definitely thicker knives on this list, but this is a good medium ground. And like I said, for a sub $20 knife, you have to kind of figure out what your high priorities are because things like finding a larger knife in a sub $20 range just really isn't going to happen. So the fact that this is a heavy duty knife, you can use this for batoning and hardcore tasks. I would recommend reprofiling the edge, especially towards the tip where you guys can see that Scandi grind is kind of shallow. And also of course, redoing the spine um, because it definitely is on ground. So that's the first one up. Now in a very similar vein, we have the more robust. Now the r robust is a little bit more refined overall. And this one is the first one to feature rubberized handles. The core is still plastic, but the outer uh, area, the black, area is rubberized so you're going to have more grip and like I said your blade length is a little bit shorter but this is also another sub $20 knife and uh, yeah so it's pretty good you will still need to you know re-grind the spine if you want to strike ferro rods with it but the actual blade itself is totally good to go it's a true Scandi you can see that that uh, Scandi is held all throughout the belly and tip of the blade so in my opinion I like the robust a little bit more than the heavy duty but the heavy duty has a slightly longer blade and a little bit longer handle. All right, stepping it up into a little bit more expense or a little bit higher of a price point, we have the first kind of large and what I consider like if you're on a budget and you're looking for a survival length blade, this is the Mora Pathfinder. This one never really caught on, but it is a like seven inch blade. It is made out of DLC coated 1095 high carbon or C100. Now the nice things about this one, the spine is ground so you can immediately strike ferro rods out the gate and you also have a well done Scandinavian grind. Once again, two, you have a rubberized insulated handle for cold climates and you do have that larger blade length for spanning things. Now this is not gonna be the strongest knife on this list, but for around $50, I think this one's like $49.99, is going to be very hard to find a knife that is in similar competition to this one. I think the only thing that would compete with this directly would be Cold Steel's uh, Recon Scout, which I have the SRK in this list, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, but I do not have the Recon Scout just yet. But 
between the Mora Pathfinder and the Cold Steel Recon Scout, those are gonna be your choices for around $40 to $50. All right, stepping it up into the $60 to $70 range, we have Veristalaika with their Tarava Yakari Puko. And some people say that I butcher the pronunciation. That's how I pronounce it, so <laughs> that, there is that. Now, this is the 140 millimeter um, Tarava Yakari Puko. And this one, I think, is a pretty good length for it, being a survival knife. This is around a five inch blade length, and it is made out of 80 CRV2, so you're getting a decent carbon steel. And yeah, once again, fully insulated rubberized handle. This one is full tang, you guys can see there. Personally, for me, I don't really think that necessarily these knives being full tang is like the proof of quality. A lot of these knives are far tougher than you might think. Um, but yeah, so this is, like I said, the Tarava Yakari Puko and uh, this one's made by Veris Delica. Now these, you do have to go to Veris Delica's website to get them. You can't just, you know, go on Amazon and buy one, but they are there, they are available. Now, before we go into a little bit of a larger survival knife, I'll dial it back a little bit more and talk about the Arminger 4 from Demco. Now, once again, this is a little bit of a smaller knife, but depending on what your needs are, this one is also made of 80 CRV2, once again, full tang, fully rubberized handle. So you're definitely noticing the trend here. Now, like I said, this one's a little bit smaller, but uh, it's still, like I said, a decent knife toughness or decent knife toughness wise. You're still looking at about an eighth of an inch thick uh, for the blade thickness. So once again, very good. Um, one thing that I do like about Demco, and we have another Demco knife coming um, in the list, is that they have fully rubberized handles and the rubberizing that they use is pretty much the same as um, cold steels because these are made in the same factory in Taiwan as cold steels knives. And I really like how grippy and how tacky the rubber is. And it's kind of hard to emphasize because there, most of these knives do have rubberized handles, but not all rubberized handles are made the same. So these Veris Delicas are not bad, but the rubber is definitely harder and less pliable. So you still get some grip, but not as much grip as say the Arminger or an SRK. All right, now moving it up into another, what I would consider proper survival size knife is Veris Delicas Scrama. And this one is the 210. You can also get this in 240 if you want a little bit of a larger chopper. But I feel like around that seven inch, this is just over seven inches in blade length. You're getting a very good usable, useful blade length. And uh, this definitely could start to fall into the role of a chopping knife. Now, once again, similar to the Tarava Yakari Puko. The Scrama has a fully rubberized handle, full tang, and uh, yeah, super comfy. Definitely grippy. Now, like I said, it is rubberized. The rubber isn't as soft as some others, but it is still plenty of grip and it has a very positive handle for traction. So really do like it. This is, like I said, what I would consider like my favorite budget chopper. And if you're on a budget and you really do want a sincere like budget survival knife. I would say the Scrama is a very, very compelling knife. It's about 70 to $80, depending on how you get it. You can get them without sheaths and you'll save a little bit of money. Um, but yeah, so depending on how you have it outfitted, it can be a little bit more, it can be a little bit less, but overall a really solid knife. All right, stepping it back down in size, we have the Mora Garberg, a very well-proven knife. Now, this is the carbon version. Unfortunately, my heavily used version of this was the stainless steel one that I let go, but this one is still a little bit new. Haven't put too much use on it, but definitely will be using the heck out of it this summer. But the Garberg is a, um, it comes in stainless or carbon. Like I said, this is the carbon version in essentially 1095. Once again, you're seeing a sharpened back or spine for striking ferro rods, full tang, and this one is a plastic handle as opposed to the rubber. Like I said, a handful of these are plastic, but most are rubberized. And so this one doesn't have quite as much grip, but still not bad. And uh, the Garberg is definitely a little bit more oriented towards bushcrafting, but can still do a lot of field tasks very well. All right, next one up, and once again, not one that's my favorite, but this is every winter survival knife that you should know of, and so the next one up is the Gar or the Gerber Strong Arm, um, and so this is the Gerber Strong Arm here. Once again, not my favorite. I do personally feel like there are things that I would change about this knife to make it superior, but this is a knife worth knowing, and uh, it's a knife worth. Um, <coughs> 
knowing about, I guess I should say. So once again, you see a fusion of plastic and rubber, uh, very grippy rubber, I will give it to them. I do like the rubberization of this knife. Um, you're looking at 420 HC, so probably um, my least favorite steel of the list and is going to offer the least edge retention, but um, for the most part, outside of a few other knives, this knife is going to offer you probably some of the best um, corrosion resistance. So once again, there's a few other knives that are a little bit better with corrosion resistance, but it still is decent. Going up or going to the next one, we have the Cold Steel Master Hunter. Now this one's in CPM 3V, and if you find these on you know sales and stuff, you can get these for just as much as a Gerber Strong Arm. In fact, I paid just as much for this knife as I did my Gerber Strong Arm, um, and this one was about $89.99. And this is made out of CPM 3V, which is a superior steel to 420 HC. And uh, the Master Hunter is one of my favorite kind of. I, I kind of label it as a budget like survival and bushcrafting knife because realistically speaking with this knife having CPM 3V with it being fully rubberized, it's a very tough knife. Um, this is a knife that you can use in pretty much every circumstance and situation and the steel is a high enough caliber and quality that realistically you could get this knife and just keep it. You don't really need to go to anything more expensive than this. Um, this is a really solid knife. Now like I said, fully rubberized. It is not quite full tang, but essentially full tang. And I really do like Cold Steel's um, rubberized handles. They are super grippy, super tacky, and they are of course coated in traction. You guys can see here um, there is little micro traction dots all around here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, and it gives you just gobs of traction. Now this knife is full flat ground, so it is, take that for what it's worth. Um, some people think that full flat grinds or FFGs are not as strong, but it really goes back to the steel being used and also the overall thickness. Luckily, these guys are pretty chonky at their you know distal end, but they are performers, no doubt. Now, the next one up and in similar stride is the Cold Steel SRK, also in CPM 3V. Now, the CPM 3V versions of this are definitely more expensive. You can find the SK5 high carbon versions of this on sale for around 30 bucks. They are practically giving them away. Um, but these CPM 3V versions, in my opinion, if you have the you know extra 89 to $99 to go and purchase one of these, I think the CPM 3 vert CPM 3V versions of the SRK and Master Hunter are really great end or stop point knives because they're going to give you a lot of performance for your price. All right, moving up. All right, almost before I forget, the Mora Kunzbull. This is definitely a little bit of out of order, but I almost forgot this guy. Um, definitely a little bit more of an affordable knife, but the Kunzbull offers a lot of great value to it. Now it is the thinnest knife on this list, and that's why I almost considered not including it because broadly speaking, you want thicker knives, like around an eighth of an inch thick minimum, but this one is tough. But if you want a little bit more of a slicey knife, this guy's around a tenth of an inch thick, so it's definitely a little bit thinner. There is some flex to the blade, but it is still strong. I mean, I have pounded this thing through wood um, many a time, and it, it is a strong knife for its thickness. Now, like I said, this is designed a little bit more to be a thin, slicey knife with that compound grind in the front, really helping thin out the steel in the front half of the blade. Um, these are also stainless, they're in 12C27. Uh, Sandvik, so if that's a pro, it's a pro, if it's a con, it's a con. Um, the other things to note about this guy, it is sharpened on the spine for striking ferro rods, and it does an excellent job at that. Once again, fully rubberized handle, so you're looking at some good traction. Um, next up is going to be the Bussy um, Scrapyard Knife Company, specifically WS1021. Now they do make this line of WS10 series knives, like the 1020, 1021, 1022, 1023, and they are all just varying blade shapes. They use the same handle, same handle length, and uh, the blade length does vary slightly on which um, 
blade shape you get, but they're all overall very similar to this. Now this one also has a triple Cerakote finish to it. Not all of them have the same Cerakote finish, but they're all reasonably the same knife. Now they, they use SR101 for steel, which is a proprietary version of 50 to 100 ball bearing steel. So you are getting decent edge performance with these, but once again, it is a fully rubberized handle. It is a pretty generous handle too. And uh, yeah, I have no complaints with them. This one is also very similar to the cons bull, about a tenth of an inch thick, but it is 52-100, so it is fairly tough. And this knife is definitely not gonna just snap on you. So that is the next one on the list. All right, so next one up is the Demco Free Rain. Now the Demco Free Rain is a bit of a cool knife. It is kind of a spiritual successor to the SRK. It takes a lot of design or a lot of kind of ethos of what the SRK is supposed to be and just kind of modernizes it. You see a more modern handle and some people will like it. Some people like the more traditional simplistic handle of the SRK, but this one definitely has a more well-defined um, handle. Uh, in, in addition to this, you have a slightly shorter blade and you have a spear point as opposed to a clip point or maybe a drop point as opposed to a clip point. So take those things for what it's worth. This one is the OS 10A version. They also make it in Magna Cut. And I would say for around $150, especially if you can get the Magna Cut version of this, which they do periodic drops of the Magna Cut, I would say that this is a really solid contender um, and probably the cheapest survival outdoor knife that you're going to get in Magnica. So a lot of people sit there and they harp on the price of this being, you know, $150. But if you can get one in Magna Cut, it's probably going to be the cheapest, easiest route into Magna Cut that you can find. So yeah, once again, like I alluded to earlier with the other Demco, the Armager 4, they do use the same type of rubberized handle that the SRKs use. So it is very grippy, very tacky and covered in traction. Now the one in partial advantage, potential advantage, is that these are true full tang as opposed to SR, the SRK or Master Hunter's um, fully encased handle. So take it for what it's worth. There are pros, there are cons. Okay, last one up and kind of wrapping it up as a whole. Of course, there are other knives we could talk about, but the last one up is going to be the Generation 2 Falkneven S1. Now, the A1 is also a very good contender. Realistically, you could put any of the Falknevens on this list too, the F1, the S1, the A1. I would probably stick to the base models of them because if you go with the X version, so like the A1X, the F1X, the S1X, um, they go to a... Uh, slab style handle. So you have an exposed full tang, which is once again counterintuitive to the idea of wintertime survival knives. But the S1 is a decent choice. It's, in my opinion, once again, not one of my favorites because I feel that while this knife is solidly built and it's well made, it's also a bit outdated. And they have kind of updated it and revised it for, you know, um, the more modern knife kind of world or scene. But they're still using triple layer laminate VG10, which is very rusty resistant, especially considering some of the other high carbon steels here, but it is also more prone to chipping and more prone to the edge breaking as opposed to rolling. So take that for what it's worth. It is a more expensive knife. So the fit and finish is better on this guy than other you know, more cheaper offerings, but you're also paying for that. And in my opinion, once again, similar to the uh, Tarava Yakari Puko and the Skrama, this is a rubberized handle. It is grippy, but it is also a more hard kind of rubberized alloy. So, um, just take that for what it's worth. It's not as like tacky or grippy as something like the Demko's, the Cold Steel's, um, or others. So yeah, take that for what it's worth. It's not necessarily a deal breaker, but it's worth noting. All right, guys, that has been a list. Hopefully I've tried to hit the highlights of each one of these knives and go over some of the pros and the cons of each one. Like I said, there are a ton of knives here. And of course there are others that I didn't mention for sake of, you know, brevity and keeping this video under 30 minutes long. But these are, like I said, some of the highlights of really, in my opinion, every winter survival knife you should know about. Ones that I don't love, ones that I absolutely love, um, but all of these are decent choices. Um, yeah, so anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.